Welcome back. In the last video, we looked at quickly transferring an IFC file into a structural analysis model through Grasshopper into SAP. In this video, I'll run through how you can reference geometry from the Rhino model into Grasshopper to stat your model. This will allow a more desirable result on output. This is generally a necessary process, especially if stories have not been defined within the IFC file. To make the process a little easier, in Rhino, I've drawn some working lines at the primary column center lines. These are shown in green. This will make it easier to choose at which level I want horizontal planes to be inserted. I will start at this corner column. I'll temporarily hide the column geometry to make it easier for me to snap a 3D point to. I want to add a point at all the primary four levels I want the geometry to snap to. To do this, I will add a point at each height and then I can reference that into Grasshopper. Okay, so I'll add a point at the first level along the working line I have created. Going up this column, I can see that I want the top of this, the top of this column to define the top of the roof as well as the floor level for the part of the building which extends up. I'll also add a point where the truss bottom cords intersect into this column. And lastly, I will also add some points at the floor levels for the extended part of the building. This will define the primary horizontal planes for most of the primary elements. Back in Grasshopper, I can add a point component and reference these points. I'll turn off the layer of the model to allow me to select the points easier. It is always good to select the points in order of height. Then I can connect them to an XY plane component. This assigns a horizontal plane at each point location. These planes will effectively slice through every column of the building to create a point for snapping. I now want to look a little closer at the trusses. Because the difference in truss depths can have a big impact on the structural stiffness, we want to make sure we define these a little more precisely. Looking at the two trusses that are coming into this column, both bottom cords are intersecting at the same point. However, at the top cord, I can also see that they arrive at the column at separate heights. I can see that the two trusses inboard from the building edge are lower and the last one goes back up to the level we have previously prescribed. I could add another plane at this top level. However, if I did that, it would cut through every level of the building and potentially create unwanted nodes in other parts of the model. In this case, we allow for the user to create a planar closed curve to define an area where this plane will apply to the conversion process. This is also applicable for projection planes and restraint plane inputs. In order to generate the curve, I will set a temporary construction plane in Rhino at the height I want the curve to find. To do this, right click on the perspective view at the top left hand corner and hit set construction plane and vertical. Then select the origin of the construction plane. 
I then can na navigate to the correct view and draw a polyline to incorporate the members I want to include. I've completed a similar process to the bottom cord of this truss, which runs along this side of the building. Once I have those curves defined, I can reference those into Grasshopper using a curve component. I can then also plug those into the horizontal plane input, as this is overlo overloaded to be able to provide planes as well as planar closed curves. Just make sure to hold shift to allow for multiple inputs. I will also now add some vertical planes to ensure projection along grid lines and primary beam lines. I'll add two additional point parameters in Grasshopper and select these points from the model. I will hide the model quickly to do this. Because our model is orthogonal, I can easily use these points to create a set of XZ and a set of XY planes. I will merge these two and link them to the projection plane input. Lastly, I will reference a last point to define a plane in which an automatic pin restraint will be applied if within a vertical tolerance of the plane. And plug this into the restraint plane. I will now run the conversion again to look at the output in SAP. As you can see, the model is now looking a lot nicer, and you can now see that there are restraints at the base of the columns applied in SAP. In the last video, we will look at filtering elements to provide a cleaner model.